Hey, hello there. Today's Lee coding challenge question is called find the duplicate number. So we have a array nums containing n plus 1 integers. And the integers are taking values from 1 to n inclusive. So we have n choices. And we have n plus 1 slots where we have to find a number and plug into the slot. So if we are not allowed to uh, reuse the number, uh, we're going to run short uh, in at least the one of the number to fill out uh, n plus 1 uh, different slots. So here it says we want to prove at least the one number has to be duplicated. Uh, I, I guess you can prove this by contradiction. So just say that uh, we, we now really have this n plus 1 uh, integer array without duplicate and uh, all the numbers are within 1 to n. You just try to uh, find the contradiction and prove that. I guess that, that's possible uh, how you prove it. Um, now the question is here uh, assume that uh, there is only one number duplicated inside this uh, array nums. So you could duplicate two times, three times, four times, it doesn't really matter. Um, so, but the, the, there is only one number that has been duplicated for multiple times. We want to find this number. Uh, looking at an example, we have 1, 3, 4, 2, 2, so the 2 has been duplicated. The other one is 3, 1, 3, 4, 2, so 3 has been duplicated. Um, how, so how do we go about solve this? Um, if we forget about the, those nodes uh, temporarily, uh, the straightforward way is just uh, uh, doing a count, uh, count the number of times each number appeared. And uh, the, o the only number that appears more than once is the number we want. So it's a, a linear time to create this frequency count and the, another pass to, excuse me, exam all the key value pairs to find the one that has more than one uh, occurrence. So the key value pair would take a linear space as well. So it's a linear time, linear space. Um, uh, and it, another way is to sort the whole array, that's n log n time, and then just do a second pass to compare the adjacent numbers. If the two adjacent numbers are the same, it's the duplication. So that would be n log n in time and uh, um, constant space, if we, if we can argue that uh, in place sort is okay. Um, so, uh, but, but here, the notes here, the first thing say, says the array is read only, so that uh, get rid of the possibility of doing in, in place sort, and the constant space just killed uh, the uh, hash map, uh, strange bird song, uh, killed the, the hash map solution. And we still have this uh, complexity have to be less than squared, um, so we're looking at at least the n log n kind of uh, uh, solution. So how do we go about solve this? Let's try to uh, look at an array, look at an example and see uh, what it can tell us. So uh, let's just uh, rearrange this to be the sorted order. Um, so uh, what we can notice here is that um, um, if we don't have this duplicate, each number is actually, because we have to uh, fill the array with 1, 2, uh, n. If we don't have duplicate, that's, uh, that, that, that means we are looking at the nums array with uh, exactly n numbers, 1 to n. Uh, each number is telling us how many numbers is less than or, or less than or equal to this number. Uh, 1 has just by itself the number that's less than or equal to itself. 2, uh, we have 1 and 2 that's less than or equal to 2. Uh, a similar story for 3 and 4. But if we do have a duplicate, like uh, the example here, uh, we find that uh, when we check, when we do this test, how many number is less than or equal to the number we're looking at. Uh, in the case of 2, you will report 3. And uh, the number, when we check for the number 3, how many numbers in this array is less than or equal to 3, it will be 4. And for 4, the answer will be 5. So only 1, the number that's uh, prior to this uh, duplicated number, has the uh, number inside this array that's less than or equal to him to be exactly the same, uh, to be uh, the value of itself. Uh, so this telling us that uh, we can apply binary search on the uh, array to find the, find the first number, the leftmost number, where uh, the number of uh, elements inside this array that's less than or equal to that number is greater than the value of this array, uh, of this number we're looking at. So uh, let me just try to go through another example slightly 
more complicated uh, in the case. And we're looking at a number that uh, uh, we also have duplicate. Uh, we also get rid of one and uh, the the four number four duplicated uh, two times. Uh, the reason being that uh, we have to have uh, because the largest number here is five. Uh, in order to make this array uh, size n plus one, uh, so we have to fill this at least this six elements, and uh, we get rid of one. So the number four, uh, if it's the duplicated, has to be duplicated for. Uh, two times, uh, two two more times than uh, you should. So we do this analysis again. Uh, we look at uh, the every number and just look at uh, think about how many numbers inside this array that's less than or equal to the number we're looking at. For two, it's one. Uh, for three, it is two. And for four here, because we have uh, three copies of the four, so we add three to the prior two, it will be five. For five, it will be six. So. Uh, so basically, this telling us uh, uh, our intuition by looking at uh, the uh, this example question is making sense. Um, it might not be exactly equal to the this uh, number we're looking at uh, when we count to the number that's smaller or equal to it. Uh, it's, a, it's this one one is a special case. Uh, for this case, you can see that uh, it's a strictly less than. But uh, uh, when, that, that that doesn't change the fact uh, when we try to run this check on the first duplicated number and any other subsequent number after that, the result will be larger, one larger than the number uh, we're looking at. So um, so that's uh, that's uh, pretty much how we apply binary search. Uh, the runtime will be n log n. Uh, that's the log n is the uh, you know binary search from one to the to n. Uh, and each search, we will run this uh, check. Uh, you know, we're looking at the number. We want to count the number that's smaller or equal to it. So that that, that check is uh, linear time. So it's n log n, um, and the space is constant. That's the um, binary search solution. So let's just cut this up uh, really quickly. We got the low and high, which is one and uh, n. Here, n is basically the length of this array subtracted by one because the array has uh, n plus one element. So the length subtracted by one is the maximum number. So that L and high, low and high is now our search space. Uh, so just not gonna do binary search. Um, we get the, the pivot number and then just run the test. So we have the count, which is initially zero, uh, and we're just gonna iterate over all the number. Uh, so, actually, I can just do a sum here. Uh, num that's less than or equal to this uh, pivot number we're looking at for number in nums. If this count is uh, is less than or equal to the number, uh, that means uh, we are still in the left hand side kind of territory. We want to bump the lower bound to be at least the one. Uh, over the m. Otherwise, we will. Uh, otherwise, we are potentially looking at the, the first number where this uh, duplicated, uh, you know, situation is happening. It could be five. It could be four. So we want to remain uh, be able to uh, pinpoint to this number. So we decrement uh, the upper bound to be exactly m because we don't want to lose it. Uh, in the end, we just return the. Uh, once it's converged, uh, the low and high will be the same value, so we can return either one of those. Uh, so this is the binary search. Let me see if it works. What's happening? Yeah, it's working. Um, so so that's uh, that's one solution, but it's not the best uh, because the runtime is n log n. Um, let's try to see if we can spot some kind of a um, pattern here that allow us to come up with some even smarter. Uh, Thing. So let's think about uh, if we don't have a duplicate, we will have an array that's uh, you know looking like this. Uh, it's going to be n element from one to n. Uh, if we put the, the index here, notice what, what's what's actually happening here is that uh, uh, the index uh, and the value here, the value here is basically telling us uh, what's the next. Uh, uh, element in the line will be inside this array, right? So the first element uh, is zero, 
uh, the index zero element uh, has a value one. One is pointing to index one. Index one's value is two, and two here is telling us to go here to find the next number. Three is telling us to go for index three to find the next number, which is four. So uh, basically, the value inside this array can functionally like a like a pointer in the linked list, uh, which is pointing to the next uh, number inside this. Uh, um, uh, linked list, but, but, but here is represented as an array here. Um, let's say that if we want to uh, now we add a duplication, what kind of a change does uh, would this happen? So just try to uh, destroy the sorted property a little bit to show that uh, it's a little bit more generic. Uh, we add a two here. So what will happen? So we try to draw this as uh, actual linked list. So the, the zero here, uh, you know, the, the node zero here will point to uh, the link here one will point to uh, node one. And node one has a link that's pointing to uh, the node at index uh, two, which is going to be three. Three will point to, oh, sorry, that's two. Two will have, uh, the node two will have a link that's point to uh, the node at the index 3, so it points here. Uh, and 3 here has a link that's pointing to the node at the index 2, so we go, go uh, we, we start to for uh, getting into a loop here. Uh, because 3 after 3 is pointing to the node at the index 3, uh, that node has a link to 2, 2 is go back to here, so uh, we, we basically stuck in a loop here. Uh, so then the, the solution is. Uh, uh, pretty much uh, uh, becomes the uh, linked list cycle detection. So, just going to run this through th this kind of analysis through another example to see uh, how it goes. So, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the nodes value, and the, the arrays value here uh, are basically the links. So, here just we start with 0, that's the head node. Uh, it's pointing to node at the index 2, which is uh, here. And the link is pointing to 4, so we go there. And 4 is telling us to go to 4, so uh, we start to see a loop. So this question now is basically uh, linked list cycle detection, and what we want to find is the first node uh, inside this linked list that, that's, uh, uh, that's the entry point to this cycle. Um, so there, there are the linked list uh, cycle and linked list the cycle detection problem on LeetCode. This is pretty much the second uh, question. So to solve this, we're going to have a uh, fast and slow pointer. Just going to illustrate with a, a pre-prepared uh, uh, graph here. Uh, basically, we're going to move the faster, uh, the faster runner two hops uh, two node at a time. So in the first iteration, the slow one, we're going to move that uh, one step at a time. Uh, so we're going to, the second iteration, fast to go there, slow is here. Uh, then fast to go here, slow. Uh, fast already start to uh, get stuck into the loop. Slow, just the first, uh, just entry, en entering the loop. Then fast to go here, slow is here. Fast is trying to catching up. Um, one more iteration, it will look like this. Uh, and uh, one, two, go here, slow is here. And then the next iteration, uh, fast and slow will catch up. So, uh, but we are not done yet. We have to reset. Once, we, once the low and fast uh, meet each other, that's indicative there is a cycle. Uh, that's basically the cycle detection question number one. Uh, we have to reset the slow, have to have that to go back to the beginning and then move the slow and faster faster uh, pointer runner in the same, same pace. Just, just let it be one uh, because one is a uh, guarantee that uh, we will converge in the right place. So every iteration now we move fast and slow just one step. Uh, the next iteration here uh, then the time that uh, when slow and fast meet again, um, it's the entry point to the uh, cycle inside this linked list. So we're basically just gonna uh, use the uh, number inside this array as the links. 
to conceptually think, think about this as a linked list represented in the uh, array format and uh, try to detect uh, the uh, entry point to the cycle. So that algorithm you can see here is basically uh, linear with respect to the length of the uh, array. And uh, it's also constant space because we only have two pointers, that's uh, two, two numbers that's running. So yeah, just gonna code that, code that up very quickly. We have a slow and uh, fast. They initially to be the first number inside this array. And uh, we're just gonna uh, try to uh, run them at different speed until they meet. So for slow, we advance that uh, one at a time, one slot, uh, one step at a time. Fast, it's two step at a time. And uh, if slow and fast, they meet each other, that's indicative uh, there is a cycle. So we break out of the loop. And then we reset uh, the slow to be uh, to become the to back to the beginning, and then try to run slow and fast in the same pace. Uh, so while slow and uh, fast haven't meet in the uh, entry point of the cycle, uh, we will do this traverse. And uh, when they meet, uh, either one of those has to be the, uh, not du the first duplicate number we're looking at. So we just return either one of those. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it's working. Okay, so, th so this is uh, the uh, cycle detection uh, algorithm to, to solve this problem. Um, I think to realize either the binary search or the linked list uh, cycle detection, uh, it's, it's quite useful if we uh, you know, just do a naive sort and uh, compare adjacent from that solution and try to analysis, uh, do some analysis um, you know, by, by actually putting this on the board. Uh, you, you might get some uh, inspiration to think of either one of those solutions. The link list is a little bit hard, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, li it's a little bit hard. Um, so, mm, no, not, not really. You, you can see here there's a, this uh, kind of a diagonal line. If you draw that, it's kind of a, a linking the, those things together. It's a quite nice matching, uh, and uh, uh, but that's without duplication. Then if you add, introduce one of the duplication, that kind of uh, destroyed uh, the uh, zigzag kind of uh, linkage. And maybe that's the trigger to, to, to you, you can use to say, hey, um, I think that by, if I add one more duplicate, it would destroy this uh, nice linkage uh, and just starting to analyze what kind of property it will have. And here you can see that it's quite obvious uh, if it's a sorted order, uh, if you insert one duplicate, uh, instead of be able to keep advancing to the next, the next, the next, uh, uh, you start a self loop there. And then maybe join some more generic case, you can find a bigger loop and uh, do some analysis about that. Uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's the two solutions to this question today.